Okay. Uh, so to end this lecture, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, the analysis of not only the accuracy of the different schemes, but also the stability of the different schemes. Now, what I'm talking about is numerical schemes for PDEs in general, finite difference, finite volume, and finite elements. Okay. And no matter which method you use, it's generally uh, difficult to analyze the stability for arbitrary domains, arbitrary discretization, and uh, arbitrary differential equations. So we usually uh, restrict ourselves to a pretty fundamental and pretty simple class of differential equations coupled with a particular boundary condition and a particular uh, grid space. So this is, we usually restrict ourselves to linear PDEs, okay, and uh, uh, uniform grid spacing. And periodic boundary conditions. BC stands for boundary conditions. So if you have all of these three criteria satisfied, there is a very powerful tool to analyze the stability of your numerical schemes. It's called a Fourier analysis. Okay, and the result of this analysis. Of course, it's strictly applicable only to linear PDEs, uniform grid spacing, and periodic boundary conditions. But it actually gives you a very good sense of how stable, in general, a particular scheme applied to a particular equation is. The way to generalize is actually uh, pretty straightforward. The requirement for linear PDEs is pretty strong. But that can be relaxed by linearizing a nonlinear partial differential equation, right? So if you have a nonlinear differential equation, you can basically derive, okay, up to a small perturbation, what is the equation behaving like? And if the scheme is stable for the linearized equation, it's very likely also stable for the nonlinear equation. There are many situations of the opposite, right? So even if uh, sometimes, a scheme is unstable for a linear PDS, it's actually stable for the nonlinear version because the nonlinearity can provide additional stabilization. Uh, so basically, linearizing the PD is a good sense, is a good way to generalize the result of Fourier analysis. U uniform grid spacing is uh, uh, another constraint, and uh, uh, there is not really much to do there except for if you have a bad grid maybe make the grid a little bit better so that uh, to really stabilize it. Uh, and the periodic boundary condition is another constraint. But if you have some boundary condition that is not periodic, okay, that usually means you have two separate requirements for the stability. First of all, your scheme has to be stable for periodic BCs. It is very rare to see that uh, if you have an unstable scheme for periodic boundary conditions uh, that are magically made stable by introducing some boundary condition. So you have to have a, a stable scheme with periodic boundary conditions. And in addition, your particular discretization of the boundary condition should not introduce additional instability. Right, so, so that's another a topic that uh, I'm not going to be covered in this class is how to design numerical boundary conditions. But let, let's uh, focus this uh, uh, discussion on what we can do to differential equations that are linear with uniform grid spacing and periodic PC. Again, let's start with the uh, differential equation. We actually started our PD discussion. du dt plus a times du dx equal to kappa times d square u dx square. That's a now a linear differential equation that has all the terms, the time derivative, the first order and second order spatial derivatives. Right? 
end, uh, let's say, uh, to make the periodic analysis a little bit uh, uh, easier, let's say x is in the domain of 0 to 2 pi. Of course, if you have a different domain, you just have to stretch uh, the different uh, uh, components of the Fourier analysis, the sine and cosine uh, terms, to accommodate the different periodicity. All right, so uh, the start of the Fourier analysis is the realization that if you plug in u equal to the summation of sine and cosine terms, let's say uh, u is equal to ui times cosine of, uh, uh, let me just use k here because I want to reserve i for the imaginary number later on. So summation over k of cosine of uh, kx, plus vk of sine kx. What you realize is something interesting. The derivative of u is actually another summation of minus uk and sine of kx. And of course, when you take derivative to sine of k, uh, cosine of kx, you become sine and there is a k multiplied before the sine. Right, and then as it, if you take derivative to sine, you have still vk and another k comes out, and the sine becomes cosine. So you still have a combination of sines and cosine of different multiples of x, right? Uh, basically, the derivative operator goes away. You just have a bunch of you switch. Uh, u and v at some negative signs and you multiply things by k. That's kind of a, a, a good trade-off. You, you, you get rid of the differential operator, uh, you introduce uh, some multiplications. Uh, I think that's pretty good trade-off. It becomes much easier in some sense. 